Oh, it's you. Hello there. Welcome to another exciting video where I talk about things that I bought or got or, bo or bought, you know. Um, but this time, it's going to be different because we're going to be talking about December of 2018. How is that different? Well, I've never done a pickup video about December 2018 before. I got them there. Um, so I want you to all forgive me, please, uh, for uploading this video so late uh, into January. I went to MAGFest this month, and um, I caught what we call the post-con norovirus, which does not actually mean norovirus, but is instead a substitute word here, which actually means a terrible cold that lasted about 13 total days. And I just recently got over it and should be okay to do a video now. <coughs> Hooray! Um, with it being said that I attended MAGFest this month, that means that I uh, saved a lot of my money during December. And so I wasn't able to get a whole lot of stuff, but as you can see by this pile next to me, and this big box in the background that we won't talk about because it doesn't have anything in it, actually, um, I still did pick some stuff up. So let's talk about the five things that I got in December of last year. Right? It is last year. Okay, let's do it. All right, so first things first. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate came out in December, and that means I had to get it. But there's actually a little bit of a funny story. Um, it's not really funny, it's more sad. Um, I'm part of a group on Facebook called Hyrule Cuckoos, and it's a group of gamers of all types who come together, and we're all pretty much friends with each other um, from different walks in life. It's actually very strange, um, but... I was added by a fellow friend and then became friends with more of the people in the group and started attending events that they had um, at the home of one of the moderators, my friend Kristen, uh, who is my friend now because of this group. And um, she holds an event pretty much every month um, where we all just get together and play video games, and primarily that game is Super Smash Brothers for Wii U. Uh, but then Smash Ultimate came out. So she was like, okay, how about this? Five dollars to enter, we'll have a tournament, I'll pick up a copy of the game on launch day, and winner gets the free copy of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Well, free if you consider five dollar entry free. And I do, because that's fifty-five dollars fewer than I, uh, you know, wanted to pay. So, I went to this tournament, and there was no tournament. Not enough people wanted to enter. Which really sucks. So, the next day, I bought the game myself. Great story. Uh, <laughs> but I did have my first experience playing Smash Ultimate with all of those wonderful people from Hyrule. And that's pretty much the best way to have a first experience with a Smash game. Because otherwise, I probably would have had it all by myself. Since practically none of my friends are really into Nintendo. Um, although that's starting to change now that the Switch is a thing seeing more and more people start to hop on the Switch bandwagon, and that's great. If you'll notice, the cartridge isn't in the case because I've been playing the shit out of it. Um, and if you'll also notice, uh, everyone is here. So, yeah, I was really excited when this game not only got announced, but I saw all of the new characters that were getting added, and there were still five DLC characters to be announced, actually four since Joker from Persona 5 got announced recently, um, but I'm really hoping for some more Nintendo stars like Professor Layton and even though he's already an assist trophy, it would be nice to see Isaac from Golden Sun participate in the fight. Um, but we'll see what happens. Nintendo has a lot of weird history and series that they don't really pay a lot of attention to. And there are also a whole lot of games Nintendo published over the years that they don't really pay attention to. Um, which strikes me as strange because they added Ice Climbers in Melee for seemingly no reason. It's okay with me, I don't really care, but... Um, why Ice Climbers and not somebody more spectacular like Professor Layton? And I'm also wanting to see some nice third-party representation, like maybe Crash Bandicoot, or Spyro the Dragon, or Banjo-Kazooie. Although I was very happy when Simon and Richter from Castlevania finally got announced and then put in the game. Really happy about that, but I'm not here to talk about my Smash predictions and hopefuls. I'm here to tell you that I got Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and I'm still playing it, and it's me. As we seem to do once every couple of months, my friends Nathaniel and Shannon and I convene 
uh, this time here at my place, uh, to hang out for a weekend. So they stayed the night, we played a lot of video games, we watched a lot of YouTube videos, and they brought me some gifts because they're so nice. Um, they actually brought me one gift in particular, which I'm not going to show on camera, but I'll tell you about it. Um, it's a Mega Man X figurine that is posable and comes on a stand. I would show it to you, but I've already posed it, and it's, it's not fragile, but it is delicate, and if I move it, I'll have to spend 30 minutes putting it back the way I wanted it. Um, so just take it on um, honesty that I do have that, and it's in my possession. It's right over there. But anyway, they also brought me a, a bunch of games and said to me, um, these aren't necessarily a gift, but we were going to get rid of these, and we figured if you wanted them, uh, you could take them, and if you don't want them, then you get rid of them however you see fit, and you keep whatever spoils you get, be it money or trades. And I said, that's really awesome, thank you so much. Um, so they gave me four games, uh, two of which I'm not showing on camera because I do already have them, um, although not in physical, I have them in a, in a, a digital media format. Um, so I didn't know whether or not I should, but it's two copies of Myst. Um, one is an original copy of Myst and one is an updated copy of Myst. Um, but yeah, Myst rocks. But let me show the other two games that I was um, more than happy to pop on the shelf. And the first one is Dragon Quest VIII, Journey of the Cursed King, whose subtitle I always forget. This is actually a Dragon Quest that I have never played before. Um, when I saw that Nathaniel and Shannon were getting rid of this, I was a little bit surprised because it's a Dragon Quest game, and as far as my knowledge, um, they really enjoy that sort of thing. Um, but I guess they either got tired of playing it or didn't enjoy it, and so it's mine now, and I'm very happy. Um, I don't know too very much about this particular entry in the series, but I do enjoy myself a good Dragon Quest, or as I still call it, Dragon Warrior, because I'm a big fan of the first game in the series, uh, which was called Dragon Warrior when it came to America because of some sort of legal dispute over the name Dragon Quest. But that's not all. Let's move on to the other one. Once upon a time, Nathaniel and Shannon came over and did all that stuff that I said before, but they also gave me a second game. <laughs> um, in this game, I have a little bit of a history with. And I was surprised that Nathaniel and Shannon gave me this game because Nathaniel and I are such big fans of Mega Man and of Keiji Inafune, the man who basically um, designed and came up with Mega Man. Um, although the real creator, Akita Kitamura, is more to our liking. Uh, however, this man was the pretty much um, producer and director of the Mega Man games, and when we found out that he was breaking away from Capcom and creating a game of his own titled Mighty No. 9, um, I assumed that both of us were really happy and, and jumped on board. I don't know what Nathaniel's side of the story is, but I can tell you mine. Mine is that I pledged $114. Why that specific amount? Well, because that's what I could afford at the time and felt like giving in um, to the cause. Because I really love Mega Man and I love Keiji Nafune. And I spent $114 on not just Mighty Number no. 9, but also on various delays, false advertising, um, a, a PS Vita version that will probably never come out. Um, was it supposed to come out on 3DS? Who knows? Either way, Mighty Number no. 9, which even though it's been out for very many years now, uh, I never picked up, even though I spent $114 to fund it. So yeah, my name should be in this game's credits. And I never cared to look because I'm disappointed by the outcome of this project. And I suppose Nathaniel was too which disappointed me even further when he handed it to me and said I could do with it what I wanted. I will gladly put it on my shelf as a collector's piece and also as a memento of the history of video games when things just couldn't go right. One of the people that I love in my life and unfortunately don't get to see a lot because of his um, living situation. He's currently in Florida attending school for game design. Is my friend Sean. And because he lives in Florida and I don't get to see him much, um, it's always really nice when he does finally come to visit. And because December has that beautiful Christmas time in it, he did come to visit. 
And um, he actually ended up coming with us to MAGFest. More on that next month when I chronicle this month. But um, while he was up, he dug through a bunch of his stuff and he found something and decided, I don't want this anymore. Hey, Matt, you collect. You want to take this off my hands? And I said, sure. How much? And Sean thought for a bit and said, well, I could give it to you, but I could use the money since we're going to go to MAGFest. And I said, you know what? That's a good, that's a good point. I'm more than happy to give you the money if it means you're coming with us to MAGFest. In any other circumstance, I wouldn't be upset if he asked money for it anyway, because he has every right to. And I'm not that type of jerk. Um, so when he did ask for only $20, I said, sure. And he gave me, for whatever reason, I said yes to, to getting this. <laughs> um, an original Xbox 360 Kinect sensor. Um, it is not fully complete, as it doesn't contain the game Kinect Adventures, but I do own that game separately. So if I wanted this to be complete, I could just pop the game inside. But it does contain everything else that came with it originally, um, which is nice. Including the inserts, which you typically don't find nowadays. But yeah, check it out. It's this failure of a thing. Thank you, Sean. I'm actually pretty glad to own this, even though it is what it is. And, um, well, Sean got that 20 bucks, and I believe he used it to buy something at MAGFest, which was the deal in the first place. And I was there when he bought it. I just don't remember what it was, because I did so much at MAGFest that I don't remember half the shit that I did that wasn't stuff that I specifically did. So, yeah. It's the Xbox 360 Kinect sensor. They changed this up, and they, they gave it a redesign or two, but this one's for 360, it's not for the Xbox One. And I think that's why he's giving it to me. Well, or selling it to me in the first place, because she, he has an Xbox One now, and probably doesn't play his 360 anymore. So now it's mine. And this is going to sit in the box in my closet for eternity, because I don't intend to use it. Because it's a piece of garbage. But I'm so happy to have it. Alright, so one last thing, and this one was um, another gift, actually. Christmas time, yay. And who better to give me gifts at Christmas than my family? Um, it's, it's kind of a mixed bag with my family when it comes to Christmas because I'll either get just money or something video game related, but it usually won't be actual games. And that's always been kind of a topic of contention uh, in my heart because it's, it's very easy <laughs> to figure out what it is that I need because I have public lists on like four different websites of my wish lists. And you could just ask me, you don't have to surprise me, but I appreciate the thought. However, getting something video game related is super cool too. Um, and so is getting regular money just by itself. Although, normally, I would prefer just to receive a thoughtful gift that has to do with my personality. So something video game related is awesome. When it comes to MAGFest, receiving money is more awesome. So this Christmas, I was very happy to receive money because it meant I could buy more stuff at MAGFest. However, personal um, opinions aside and personal gift-giving uh, advice aside, my Aunt Catherine, whom I love with all my heart, usually gets me something video game related. And um, she usually spends a hefty penny to do so. Um, you might ask yourself, what can you get that's video game related that costs so much money? This thing. Yep, that's right, I got my very own question block. Just kidding. It's a book, which I love. I love books, but I also love video games. This is, as you can see by the spine, Super Mario Brothers Encyclopedia, the official guide to the first 30 years, 1985 to 2015. It was published by Dark Horse, the same company that published uh, The Legend of Zelda's Hyrule Historia. So this is going to be quite the treat to read. I will take you through some of its pages, though I cannot promise I can take you through the whole thing. In fact, I won't promise that at all. But it really is a complete and comprehensive history of Mario's first 30 years, starting with Super Mario Bros. Um, unfortunately, it does leave out his time before Super Mario Bros. But, you know, he wasn't super then, so... You know, it's but, yeah, here's stuff about Mario 2, and here's stuff about Mario 3, and here's stuff about oh, Rosalina, the best girl in the whole universe. 
I'm always really happy to research video game history on my own, but when somebody provides me with the resources to do so, it shows that they are paying attention to something that I like. My aunt typically gets me something Mario related, if something video game related at all. Um, last year on my birthday, she got me the Super Mario Brothers cereal, <laughs> which isn't expensive, or at least it, it wasn't just at that time. It started getting expensive a little bit later, because scalpers. And she also got me some uh, Super Mario Brothers Pez dispensers the Christmas prior to that. Um, the entire collection, actually. <clears throat> actually. So if they ever rise in price, well, I'm not going to sell them. But it'll be nice to know that I own something expensive and they're hanging up on my wall right there next to some various posters and mementos from friends past. But yeah, providing me with a resource to research video game history, especially one that is officially published and details very, very nicely the history of one of my favorite video game characters in Nay franchise. Um, is a treat, and it means that you are paying attention to what I like, it means you care about me, and it's a way to get me to drive you to the airport at 3 a.m. on a sleety Wednesday evening. 3 a.m. is the morning, though, but it's dark out, so whatever. So yeah, if you ever want me to do a favor for you, uh, get me something about video game history, or even better yet, get me something that's a video game. <laughs> but yeah, thanks Aunt Catherine, I really love this. And I spent uh, the entire Christmas morning while everyone was getting ready to go uh, to my cousin Tony's. Um, I spent the morning looking through this and just reveling in all of its glory. It's fantastic and I recommend it, but it is very expensive. So be on the lookout for it, but also worry about your wallet, I suppose. But that's coming from me, a man who this month alone spent close to $700 on video game things. And the month isn't over yet. Oh, it's gonna be more. Oh well. But yeah, let's do one more jump cut and we'll close this out. So thanks for, um, you know, sticking around. 2019 is going to be a great year for me, as far as video games are concerned. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes into 2019, I suppose. Like, I'm gonna be working on my music, and my prose, and more poetry, and my Let's Plays. I'm gonna be starting Glover soon. Ooh. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, it's going to be fantastic, and I'll meet you back here in, I want to say, roughly 30 days, maybe sooner, hopefully sooner, and we will talk about everything that I picked up at MAGFest and more this January. So yeah, thanks for sticking around through 2018. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you. Bye.